Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin starting on the low time frame where we're looking for a wave 4 that is ended and another wave 5 to the upside. In this particular scenario we have a 1, 2, looking for a 3, eventually a 4 and a 5 that then ends this wave 5 over here. After this wave 4 is then labeled a WXY within Y, a zigzag to the downside where wave C did come short of the most common target for a wave C but it it is a scenario we at least have to keep in mind. Inside this wave X we then have a complex structure in a double zigzag WXY and this wave W is a flat which then results in a flat double zigzag zigzag WXY which is valid and an impulse to the upside. Now if we then look at this impulse to the upside we are looking at this structure over here. We have a finished wave 1 and wave 2 over here. Now looking for this move to the upside in a wave 3, then a retracement in 4 and 5. So in this scenario, we are still expecting a bigger range to form that is at least similar to the wave 2 that we have here. However, usually a wave 4 takes more time to form than a wave 2. So we can expect this wave 4 to be longer than wave 2 in time. The common retracement targets for a wave 4 are on the chart taken with the Fibonacci tool from the low of 2 to the current high that we have giving us a target area between the 0 0.236 and the 0 0.5 between 45k and 44k. Now it is always quite difficult to know exactly when a wave 3 is finished. If price continues to the upside these fibs will also continue with price towards the upside because what's more important at the moment is the time and the length in time of the range compared to how deep it goes. The invalidation for this wave 4 is the 0 0.618 at 43.5k. If we look at the second bullish scenario then we are looking at a flat over here that is the end of wave 4 ABC flat ending 4 looking for a 5 up where this is your wave 1, 2 and this is part of a wave 3 where usually your minimum target for wave 3 is the 1.618 which is sitting at 48.2k taken from the low to the high of 1 to the low of wave 2. Now this wave 1 however is not so nice it's not a pretty wave 1 we are looking here for a leading diagonal structure and then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, where all of the waves are then preferably zigzag structures here, where we have a 3 wave move in 1, then a 2, 3 wave in 3, 4, and then another 5 to the upside. The problem of this diagonal, however, is that wave 3 is longer than wave 1. Now, it doesn't invalidate a contracting diagonal, but it is not pretty. As most common, a wave 3 is not longer than wave 1 in a contracting diagonal, but clearly that is the case over here. In this scenario, we then expect price to continue towards the upside impulsively, preferably that wave 3 hitting the 1.618. A minimum requirement is that wave 3 is not allowed to be the shortest wave in an impulse compared to 1, 3 and 5. So it's not a must that it hits the 1.618, but it is most common. So we would then prefer to see price moving towards the upside through the target box where we are right now. And also this resistance we have above price, 47.2 to 47. 5k and also not to forget the yearly level 46.2k i definitely keep an eye on that level because as members have shown in the group as well the previous time we hit a yearly level we had a very big retracement so it's definitely worth keeping that one in mind in the bearish scenario, we're looking for this WXY to only be a wave A, followed then by a wave B to the upside in three waves, and then a wave C to the downside. Now you can see that in this scenario, this wave B is very short in time compared to wave A, which does lower the probability a bit for this particular count, but it doesn't change the fact that having a new high over here above the range is wave B territory as well. The common target area for a wave B in this case is taken from the high to the low or actually the beginning to the end of wave A which is the area where we are now the 1.236 to the 1.38 and internally we are then looking for a zigzag in a wave B which is the most common pattern in a wave B as well for a bigger flat structure. 5, 3, 5 wave move. Now for a wave C the 1.618 is still a target quite common actually but moving above this is not that common is relatively rare. The 2.618 is on my chart. Also I would say a potential next target for a wave C but rare again right it's not a common target for a wave C to go all the way up here and in this range the 2.618 is in confluence with that yearly. So again 
it's an area that I will keep my eye on. Now an alternative in this case is this scenario here where we then have the flat wave A, bigger WXY in a wave B. This suits a wave B a little bit better I suppose because a wave B tends to be relatively long but we then have a double zigzag in this scenario for then a wave C to the downside. Target area has been hit for a wave B but then again in this target area we have that yearly level as well in confluence with the 1.38 and of course the daily just above but in general we are not out of the danger zone for a wave B and a wave C to the downside there is still that potential a wave c to the downside should be a quick impulsive move as well one two three four five where preferably you're going to take the lows of this range and then a bigger expanding flat a b and then a wave c now if we look at this range besides the level that i have mentioned throughout the video the monthly over here where we are ranging at the moment right 45 500 the yearly 46 200 and the daily 46.600 we also have this range over here this is the volume profile of the range where we moved above the value area high this is also an important support resistance area in the range as you can see resistance resistance and there is the potential for a move down and support because if we are looking for bullish continuation and we are looking for a potential wave four to eventually form then if this would be the high of wave three your wave four target area is in confluence with this support resistance area so you want it to hold and then for price to move back towards the upside if you fail this area start closing candles below then the point of control is pretty much in confluence with the golden pocket but that would be an invalidation for a wave four after which likely lower prices are then expected but we will observe how price then potentially moves to the downside here if we look at the CVD divergences, there's currently not too much going on. However, on the very low time frames, like three minute time frame, you can see there's a little bit of bearish CVD divergences as price has been moving towards the downside at the high, lower high on price, higher high on the CVD on both blue and yellow. So we had some bearish CVD divergences here at the top right. And this kind of like continued as price was moving to the downside, lower highs on price. However, look here as well, lower high on uh, price, higher high on the CVD. So there's multiple instances also here, lower high, higher high, where we have a little bit of bearish CVD divergences, but this is the three minute time frame. However, it of course supports this little move that we currently have towards the downside, which also supports supports a potential wave four where of course we keep an eye on the validation of a wave four as well because we are also in wave b target area right and if we then look at the probabilities of the different scenarios then on the low time frame when looking at this range here then at the moment pretty neutral as i like to observe the reaction over here and give price some more time to range however i would really like price to hit the yearly level because it is such a big level on the chart as well at 46.2k so that is definitely a level that i'm keeping my eyes on price is also currently at critical levels right caution to late longers and also early Really short as trade safe a soon to end wave five or wave b are both followed by big retracements and of course in both of the medium time frame scenarios or low time frame here as well we're looking for either a wave five after which we expect a big retracement or eventually a b and then a wave c to the downside with a big retracement the main difference is usually the target area right a wave b we are inside that target area for a wave b while for a wave five price can move all the way up to 52k and then still have a rejection there on the micro, more locally over here, currently the higher probability scenario would be to have one more high over here after then a potential wave of four to hit that yearly level and then we take it from there. And then on number two is already a bigger retracement as then we are looking for a potential finished ABC and a bigger move down, right? That's the alternative. So... I am eyeing a local wave four retracement over here at the moment for at least one more local high, depending on how price moves to the downside here. Of course, also keeping an eye on the CVD divergences. And this wave four is preferably the size of this wave two, as mentioned, or longer in price. And if price is going to move down impulsively or hit the 0.618, probabilities might change. So I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trade indicator you can use in my opinion which is the cvd and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye